Hi, all. I hope everybody's having a good start to the week. I want to uh, do a quick introduction for this week of Impressionism, our period Impressionism. You can find it in your book on page 125 and in your textbook, so your workbook on page 125 in your textbook, uh, page 378. Uh, impressionism um, is described as <clears throat> Uh, what the eye sees, not the mind. What the eye sees, not the mind. And this is an interesting way of describing what the artists um, were looking for what, when they were creating their work. They would walk upon a scene and they wanted to, before you add any kind of interpretation, any thinking behind it, just capture that sight. And it was primarily focused on light, so the reflection of light. So when you come to into any uh, scene, any environment, and a lot of times this was outdoors, um, what's happening is the images are reflected back to you as light. And so the artist at this time wanted to capture what that looked like. So consequently, some of the characteristics of it was there was a real rough finish to the art. Uh, an unfinished uh, look to it. Matter of fact, there was criticism of the artist that, you know, there's where's the detail, the uh, lack of detail, and that this painting doesn't look like it's done. So come back to us when you've finished it. And uh, matter of fact, one of the uh, leading artists during this time, <clears throat> Claude Monet, you can find a painting of his on page 378. It's um, Impression Sunrise. Uh, and it was created in 1872. And this actually is really a great example of Impressionism. Uh, it's the artist's interpretation looking out over this bay of the reflection of light and capturing that image as opposed to trying to interpret and paint all these details. Matter of fact, you look, uh, there's two uh, black images in the middle of the painting and you look at them, you think, well, it's a boat with two people standing in it. And uh, yes, that is what it's, representing but if you pulled those two characters out and had them stand by themselves you wouldn't know what they were they just look like black uh, blobs so um, so in context it makes sense in the overall impressionism but you know uh, I don't know if you realize how much of the world is not what you see but it's how you interpret it and so the artists were trying to get out in front of this and, and paint the world as you would see it as opposed to bringing your bias and interpretation and understanding to it. Um, they used <clears throat> small dabs of color um, that uh, to create the overall, as opposed to mixing the colors. And this is, as we go into post-impressionism, you'll see this really even become more distinguishable. And um, so they were trying to capture light as a complex reflection and a rough finish with an expressive quality. The, uh, what we start looking at going forward in the next couple of art periods is that the brush strokes, the brush strokes become notable, they're becoming shorter, they're becoming bolder. And once again, I always reference back to say the Renaissance where the artist didn't want you to think about the brush stroke or see their hand in the work because they wanted you to just focus on what they were trying to, to recreate. Um, <clears throat> Artists during this time, actually, so we looked at Monet. You look on page 379, uh, Renoir's interpretation of this outdoor gathering. And you can see the way he's captured the um, light reflecting through the trees and off the people. And it has that rough um, finish that we were talking about. Ed, uh, Edgar Degas uh, has a series of... Um, ballerinas um, where uh, he was capturing the natural light coming into these dance studios and the way they would uh, uh, highlight the dancers and the floor and the space around them and so tried to capture that from this impressionistic perspective. Uh, Mary Cassatt is another artist during this time. You can see a picture that she created on page 381. Um, Auguste uh, Rodin uh, is uh, a sculptor during this time. Matter of fact, the, the commonly recognized The Thinker, which was part of uh, uh, the uh, inspired by the Dante uh, Inferno's uh, Dante's Inferno poem, 
uh, the thinker is at the top looking down into this, into that world being described. And so that's post-impression, I mean, I'm sorry, that's Impressionism, 1874 to 1880. Um, so this week, <clears throat> you're going to have your art reflection, which is actually looking at Monet's uh, painting, uh, Water Lilies. And he has a whole series of these. As a matter of fact, Monet's Water Lilies is also a really nice example of what, uh, what the artists were trying to capture. So Monet painted many, many, many series of this. He had a pond in his backyard with, that had water lilies in it. And every day for a full year, he would go out and do a painting of this same pond. And uh, every day was different depending on the clouds in the sky or the reflection off the water, the, how bright a day it was, winter, the season, whatever. And he wanted to capture how the light uh, was different each one of these days depending on the environment. So there's a whole series of the water lilies. Um, you have a gallery visit uh, exercise, which I will uh, create another quick uh, video to, let, to introduce that to you. And um, then next week, we are, um, <clears throat> is spring break. So this is the last for this week. And uh, then you have next week off. So have a great week. I look forward to seeing your work and I will create another um, video in a second here as far as introducing the gallery visit. So. You guys have a good one. I'll see you online soon.